Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel once again. If it's your first time here, my name's Peter. This is Thailand Bound and I talk about all things Thailand. Okay, so I've had a few complaints, not really serious complaints. I've had a few guys write to me and say, look, we like these relationship stories. When's the next one coming? So uh, as you know, for the next last month or so, I've been discussing different topics about Thailand and nothing too serious. I don't talk politics or uh, religion, anything like that, or about the royal family. Um, most of my uh, videos are quite light tongue-in-cheek there's nothing too serious but I have had some people write to me and say you know we we subscribe to your channel we like these stories and I, I do realize there's a lot of guys who don't like them so if you're not into the relationship stories and um, probably better to switch off from this one because I'm gonna um, I'm, I'm uploading two of them today back to back on one video and uh, these have both been sent in to me quite a while ago now actually I've been sitting on them but what I would say I'm coming to the end of the stories that have been sent in to me so if you've been kind of pondering on sending me a story you've got one to send in but you weren't sure to send it or not um, it's pretty much guaranteed that I will read it out sometime in the near future because as I say all the other stories that have been sent to me I've now pretty much got through them and I've told you all the stories that I know okay so let's crack straight on with these two stories they're good good two stories I can't verify them as always but there's no reason for the guys to lie and they they sound to me pretty genuine you can make up your own mind uh, at the end okay so here we go So this first story is from a guy, I'm calling him Keith, uh, just to say, uh, keep his identity private. Um, so here we go. Hey Peter, a little bit about me. I'm 58, divorced twice. I have three kids, two girls and a boy. I live with my son. He is 15 and we live in Hawaii. I was in the US Army and I traveled a bit. My story starts in Australia where I was vacationing with my sister. We met, a couple of, we met a couple in a Chinese restaurant. The guy was from Malaysia and the girl was from Thailand. We were exchanging stories and I told them that, my net, that I'd planned a trip to Thailand. I jokingly asked the Thai girl if she knew somebody that could show me around. This was in 2019. I was already planning my Thai trip as a single guy. I planned to visit Bangkok and Pattaya. We exchanged Facebook contacts and she introduced me to Nang on Facebook a month later. So we were talking on Facebook for about a year before I actually made it to Bangkok where she lives. Nang is beautiful. I was thinking this can't be. There goes my plans as a bachelor. We got to know each other. She told me that she has three children and the youngest was two years old. I was reluctant in the beginning, but I thought to myself, I can still go and do the tourist stuff with her. I wasn't looking for a relationship. She owns a cosmetic school. Throughout the year, we were talking on Facebook almost every day and video chatting once in a while. I can't remember exactly when she told me she was starting a business and asked me if I wanted to invest in it. I thought, oh no, here we go. Here comes a scam. I told her that I couldn't and I felt pretty sure that she wouldn't want to meet me again. Time marched on and my planned vacation was set for two weeks in February 2020. I arrived in Thailand in the middle of the night. The next day, Nang was busy with her class, so she had one of her staff pick me up from my hotel. We finally met up and we had breakfast together. Nang did not speak much English and I don't speak any Thai. She brought along a friend, an artist, as an interpreter and we used Google Translate when we were alone. The first day I actually sat in on one of her classes and watched her work. She showed me around Thailand, the tourist stuff, the temples, the marketplaces. I met Nang's youngest son and I thought, this is not too bad. For the short time we were together, I was beginning to fall for her. We got intimate, if you know what I mean. Anyways, she took care of me and I was happy but sad to leave her. This was before COVID-19 kicked in. Luckily, I made it back home, but this is not a happy ending. I told her I want to come back and I'll try in October. I made it home and we were talking through Line. Line is a social media app, if you haven't heard of it before. Very popular in Thailand. As best as we could because of the limited communication skills between us. We would uh, video chat. She was happy, so I thought she told me that she loved me many, many times. She also told me that she had land in Udong Thani. She said if I wanted to marry her, we can build a house in the future on that land. I thought, damn, I hit the jackpot. Around June, all of a sudden, Nang texts me saying her doctor had advised her not to have a husband because there's a problem with her uterus and that she should remain single, but we could still be friends. 
She deleted me on Facebook. I was heartbroken and happy at the same time. I don't think that's, I didn't think that was possible, but I told her I was heartbroken and I, I didn't tell her I was happy. I don't know the reason, but maybe I'll find out sometime in the future. In the meantime, I'm planning another trip to Patia as soon as everything opens up again. I've learned a lot from your videos. Keep them coming. I'll keep you posted with an update. Hope to meet you someday, Peter. Thanks in advance, Keith. Next station, Siam, interchange with Sukhumvit line. Doors will open on the right-hand side of the train. Okay, let's jump straight into the second story. For the sake of the uh, this story, you know I always change the names. I don't read out the real names of the, uh, the man and the woman, but I'm calling the guy in this video, uh, his name's Ted, and I'm calling the lady Ploy. That's a, a nickname, very popular Thai girl's nickname. Okay, so here we go. Hi Peter, this story is a little bit different from some that you tell because it is an ongoing story. I am an American from Missouri. In the last four years, I have been able to visit Thailand once a year, spending three or four weeks each visit. I met Ploy during my first visit to Thailand. Unfortunately, I met Ploy just two days before I was to leave Bangkok. I watched her coming down the BTS station. That's like the Metro, you know, if you haven't been there before. I watched her coming down the BTS station and her eyes uh, locked and she smiled that big Thai smile at me. Ploy has long hair that is extremely beautiful. If I had to guess her age, I would say she was in her early 40s. I actually like the fact that she is not a young girl as we look quite good together. I think so anyway. I feel like when we're together, I don't look like I'm with a paid companion, if you know what I mean, and I'm keeping it clean for YouTube, as you always like to say, Peter. Ploy passed me on the BTS stairs and I was still looking at her. She turned around. I turned around at the same time and I started walking back towards her. Ploy told me that she was on her way to work. I asked her, where do you work? She showed me it was a few, just a few streets down from where I was staying on Soy 11. I always used to stay at the Grand President on Soy 11. So I told her that I would come back later. I did go back and it was great to see her as I felt immediate chemistry like I've never felt with anyone else or at least for a very long time. I bought myself a drink and I bought Ploy a drink. I would have bought her more because I know she gets commission on the drinks, but the bar started to get busy, so, so she had to go off and serve drinks. So, so I'm guessing she was a waitress in the, uh, in the bar, not a dancer. Uh, so my 40-something love is indeed working in a bar. I asked, asked Ploy if I could bar fine her. The management told me that the bar fine would be 1,000 baht because they don't have many staff working. So I asked Ploy if I could come back after she finished work and maybe meet her outside of the bar. She said yes. Later on, and a few drinks on the street, we walked back to my hotel. We had a really nice conversation walking back to Soy 11. I really enjoyed Ploy's company. I felt, like, I felt like I was in love and I almost told her I love you, but I was able to control myself and not tell her. I felt like a silly schoolboy, but that is the effect the Thai girls have on you. Anyway, Ploy seemed to enjoy my company and was a fun girl. I found Ploy to be very uh, she see, I found Ploy seemed to enjoy my company and was a fun girl. I found Ploy to be gorgeous. The next, uh, the small flaws on her body I found to be so beautiful. She left the next morning and I told her I would see her in the evening. I was able to meet with her one more time and I had to leave for the airport in the early hours of the morning. I was really wishing I had met her sooner at the start of my trip and not at the end. Of course, I had her line ID and we stayed in touch over the course of the next year. The next year when I planned my trip, it was poorly timed again. When I work overseas, I cannot plan when I take my holidays. I came before the Songkran festival and Ploy was still in her hometown in Isan. I had a nice vacation, except I didn't get to see Ploy again until two days before I was to leave. How frustrating again. So Ploy arrives back in Bangkok two days before I was to leave. We arranged to meet and I watched her exit the BTS station. She was such a lovely vision in a white dress. She had gone home after work, obviously showered and put on a nice white dress for me. She looked beautiful. I, I took her to a Japanese restaurant and we enjoyed a couple of drinks and some food and then went to my hotel. Fast forward one year when I'm able to visit Thailand again, Ploy and I had communicated a handful of times over the course of the year. I was looking forward to see Ploy again my feelings were if I could spend time with Ploy, I didn't need to be with other women as Ploy was the best company ever. Trying to reach Ploy the weeks leading up to my trip to Thailand was unsuccessful. I figured out that when she goes to Isan, either she doesn't take her phone or she has no signal. 
I arrived in Bangkok and I could not get in touch with Ploy. This time, a week before, I'm scheduled to leave Thailand. Ploy comes online and I see a line message from her. She had not sent me a message online, but for some reason, I can't remember how, but I could tell that she was back online. Maybe she had posted something, I can't remember. So I wrote to her and then she wrote back, I was very happy, but I had paid for the next couple of days for my hotel in Pattaya, so I planned to stay two more days and then head back down to uh, head back up to Bangkok so I could see her. Ploy explained that her son was in the military and she had to attend some type of ceremony for him back in Isan, so again I would not be able to see her. With luck, what luck, yes, over the course of the next year I followed her Facebook page and I could see that on her Facebook page with her, another guy, I was able to ascertain that he was a retired British military guy living in Thailand. I understand that she's, be she's a beautiful woman and was going to attract a lot of male attention, so I, didn't, I don't blame her for having a boyfriend. My hope was that I would be able to see her anyway on my next trip. As a matter of fact, I was in Pattaya when the city got shut down due to COVID-19. Actually, the whole country got shut down while I was there and I felt lucky to get a flight out. There was no word from Ploy and I felt foolish walking through the bars on Soy 11 looking for her as she had told me she worked at a bar on Soy 11. But I didn't find her and I was disappointed. I found peace just knowing that she was happy with the guy and hopefully was happy, having a happy life. I had a great holiday in spite of not seeing Ploy and the COVID-19 problem didn't seem to affect things until right before I left. Back in Missouri, I got a line message informing me that Ploy was back online and we chatted back and forth a little bit and I asked her if I could see her on my next trip to Thailand. She said, yes, we can meet if you like. I figured that she had broken up with a British military guy, but I seen a TikTok video with the two of them in it only a couple of days after she said we could meet. So now I have mixed emotions knowing that she is willing to cheat on the British military guy with me. I'll be happy to see her when I visit next uh, time, but feel disgusted that I can't trust her and that if she will cheat on him with me, then she'll eventually cheat on me if we end up together at all. I've been married before and I have always told myself that I would never get married again. That is until I met Ploy. Peter, I have attached a photo of Ploy. I would be happy if you told this story in your channel. Please change the names and the photo is for your eyes only. Okay, he actually sent me more than one photograph and she is, she's a very attractive girl. She doesn't look 40, um, but obviously I, I, I can't share that on YouTube. Next station, Nana. So I'm not really gonna comment too much on these two stories, but the only thing I, I would like to say, the girls who work in the bars, if you've never been to Thailand before, I don't, I've gotta be careful how I say this because this is YouTube. They're nice girls, they're great fun. I don't wanna be derogatory, they're, they're really good company. They do what they have to do. Most of, them are, most of them are not educated. They come from farming communities in the north of the country, a, a region called Isan. So they, they do what they have to do. And the majority of the girls in the bars, they send money to their families, they have children, they look after them as best as they can. And as I say, I, I would never be derogatory to them. They're, they're actually nice girls, but they are working. So if you're heading out to Bangkok or Pattaya to try and find a girlfriend, the only thing I'd say to you is if you're looking for just to have a good time you're there for two weeks and you want some fun they're great these girls are great fun you know have drinks with them hang out with them and enjoy yourself but if you're looking for something more than that a girlfriend then uh, honestly guys that's not the place to look for a girlfriend in a go go bar or a, a beer bar something like that in Thai society Thai girls Thai respectable girls normal girls they they won't go back to a hotel room with a guy they won't um as I say, it's YouTube, I can't get into it too deeply, but you'll have to try and read between the lines. I actually made a video, if you're if you're serious about trying to find a girlfriend in Thailand, a nice girl, um, by no means am I an expert. Back to that video, what I was going to say to you was that I, I made a video a while ago and it was called something like, is it possible to find a nice uh, girlfriend in Thailand? And there's lots of hints in that, um, in that video. There's lots of things that you shouldn't do and lots of things that you should do. So... I feel quite positive that the country's gonna open up fairly soon. There's a lot of talk about this vaccine. Maybe it's not, maybe it is, but there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm a very positive person, so I, I like to think in a positive way. I don't wanna be Mr. Doom and Gloom. And if it does open up, we'll 
me for one, I'm sure you guys as well, we'll all be heading back out to Thailand. And if you, if finding a nice um, girlfriend is what you want to do, have a look at that video I made. There's some good tips. And I, what I'll do, I'll put a link. You know when the music kicks in at the end of this video, there's always it always advertises two videos. I'll, I'll put the first one as, as that one. You can have a look at that and uh, that you'll get some good tips from that. Okay, guys, thanks for uh, that. Uh, the only other thing i say is, again, I've just about run out of stories. Now, all the stories that you guys send me, I don't have too many left. So if you're kind of pondering and thinking, shall I send him a story? Um, I will change your names. Nobody will know it's you. Um, but you're almost guaranteed to have it read out fairly um, quickly, you know, within the month or so. Okay, so that's it for this time around. Thanks as always. And I'll catch you for the next video on Saturday.